what we're going to talk about is estimation, one of my favorite topics. All right, and the way we're going to do it is we're going to talk about sort of three different subjects, and then we'll we'll bring them all together. Fair enough. First subject, and you don't have to worry about this. We'll go over this. This is more um, engaging, and then we'll we'll go over the slides. Um, the first subject is really about the notion of estimation in knowledge work in general. Okay? And again, I think that the, the best analogy I could come up with is the GPS. Where the GPS, you estimate to give you an idea of how long it will take to get from point A to point B, and the moment you start driving, that thing re-estimates. Now, do you guys get upset when it re-estimates? You don't look at it and say, but you committed to an estimate? <laughs> you gave me an estimate? How could you dare change your estimate? Because the reality is, for it to commit to an estimate, it has to control the circumstances. And in knowledge work, you can't control the circumstances. So how can you control an estimate? Now, one side of the Agile world says, we don't estimate. And I understand where they're coming from. I do. But the other side says, you need to tell me something so I can get started here, right? So, just tell me something. So, so on one side, we understand and acknowledge that, listen, estimating knowledge work is a very tricky thing, okay? And the reality is, you truly can't estimate it. On the other side, we say, well, the corporate world we live in is a reality, and... I won't be able to give you money or get started with you until you give me an estimate. And so the first concept I really want to emphasize is an estimate is an estimate. It's not a commitment. And this is, I think, one of the, the, the corporate tricks that have created such a resistance to even providing estimates, which is, can you just give me an estimate? It's a ballpark figure. And as soon as you give them the estimate, it's like, ha, 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 I'm going to hold you to that. Right? So that's one aspect of a paradigm shift that needs to happen. And it needs to happen across the organization, not just to leaders or to managers or to developers or to anyone. It's, it's an across-the-board thing. Okay, just on yeah. your GPS analogy then, I, I agree, and this is a conversation I have lots of time. With the GPS analogy, when you get in the car and your GPS recalculates and all of a sudden you realise you haven't got enough petrol to get to where you're going and it's the middle of the night, then your re-estimation is a problem. So... Well, hold on, hold on. What do you mean it's a problem? There's no petrol stations open in the middle of the night. Sure. So but I'm halfway there and I can't, I can't go forward, I can't go back because I'm going to run out of pitch. Sure, but whose fault is it? It's nobody's fault. Good. But it's something that needs to be managed. Can it? Well, it, it can in terms of the risk assessment and understanding the impact that the likely taking your estimate and going, well, it's within reasonable bounds. Are you but, but Peter, that GPS device calculated the best it could at that point in time. It, it did, and then you have to apply your wider experience and knowledge that says it's taking me on a route that I know half the time the road's flooded out, so I better make sure I get some petrol and pass the north before I keep going. Could be. Yeah. At the same time, it, and the reason I say this is because th there really is a difference between assessing risk and managing uncertainty. Assessing risk says you know right, about the lay of the land and you know where the risk elements are and you can calculate the probability of each of those risks. And then you can do a risk mitigation plan and you can assess the situation. Uncertainty says, I have no clue. I actually have no clue if today will be the day that I get a flat tire or not. And if you start to manage uncertainty as you manage risk, right, you will actually get so overwhelmed with the amount of things that could happen that you won't take action. Mm. I accept that. I accept that. Yeah, no, I accept that. So, so here's my thing. 
and, and I, I do understand there's a gap in what I'm talking about and what you're going to face tomorrow at work, right? And there's, there's a huge gap, right? Because we're talking about a completely different way of acknowledging how work is done, which requires a completely different governance structure that's not in place today, right? And so some of the things I'll talk about is how to get the best out of both worlds and apply something, right? However, at the same time, I will continue to promote my point of view, which is I don't think knowledge work can be accurately estimated, period. I, I just haven't seen it. What if we do is we back into our estimates. It's not that we're actually estimating the work. When I ask you how long will it take for you to write something, and you say two weeks, it's based on your best experience. It's based on all the experience you had. Now, if I were to say to you, I need it in a week, you can finish, but you'll finish something else, which is the debate of scope we've been talking about. But if I give you three weeks, I mean, I don't understand what the concept of an estimate is when we really talk about something that has no end. So really, that's my challenge here. So, and because of that, I'm saying, okay, I acknowledge the reality of the world we're in. We need to provide an estimate. We're going to provide the best estimate we can, right? And we need to understand that there's nothing we can do in the world that will ever get us to 100% accuracy. Ever. Now, that being said, let's talk about the types of estimation that we engage in. Because those are completely different. Okay? Now, Siva, can you stand up? Folks, I'd like you to silently just take a pen, take a pen, and draw Siva. No, don't draw Siva. Estimate Siva's height. Just write it down. Just write it down. Don't do anything. Just, just jot it down. All right, Siva. What did you guys have for Siva? Let's shout it out. What did you guys have? 180. Yeah, 180. 175. So the lowest was 175? Yeah. Any lower? What did you have? 180. 118? 18. Okay, yeah. so 175, 180 was the highest? And for Colin? 178. 180. So the lowest, I'm going for the lowest, 178? Lower than 178? Like 165. 165? Yeah. But I'm crazy, so. That's fine. And the highest was 180? Yeah, that was me. What did you put? 180? Uh, 178. 178, so in the middle. And then Brent? 162. I can definitely depend on Peter for the lowest. Yeah. <laughs> 162? I said 182. One? 182. 182? I'm in the middle. Siva, where are you? I'm in the middle, yeah. All right. Now, can all three of you come up here? Guys, let's sort them in terms of height. Sort them. Do you guys agree with that? Yes, no? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, now, let's hold on Siva for a second. Uh, let's go with Brent. What's your actual height? Uh, 173. Colin, what's your actual height? 179. Now, stand again, folks. Go over there. And re-estimate Siva's height based on the information you guys know. I wouldn't change it. Good. Okay, that's fine. Is anyone changing their estimate? Including you two. Would you change? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Alright, so what are our new estimates? One seven five, 
That's the lowest, I would assume. That's what I went for, yeah. yeah. And the highest? One seven. Okay. All right. See what's your right. All right. Have a seat, gentlemen. What was I going for from this exercise? Is it easy to estimate with some reference points? Yes. We suck at absolute estimation. There's a type of estimation called absolute sizing or absolute estimation. And then there's another one called relative, right? We as human beings just are horrible at absolute anything, right? Not absolutely anything, but at absolute relative sizing or estimation. We are brilliant, though, when it comes to relative, right? I mean, you guys were able to sort each other really quickly. So that's concept number two. We're really bad at absolute estimation. We're actually quite good at relative. Okay, now for option number three, for option number three, or for, for, for topic number three, what I'd like you to do is silently estimate the amount of time needed to drive from here to the airport. No asking questions, just give me an estimate. This isn't even a, a horrible city when it comes to traffic wise, so. Does everyone have a number? Not a range, a number. Yeah. And this is in minutes, right? You guys use minutes? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No conversion. All right, what is the lowest we have? Shout out, shout them out. 20. 20. 17. 17? 17? I have got a big message. And what's the highest? I have 35. And I have two. I'm 20. Now, this is a simple city, relatively, when we talk about complex cities and so forth. We, I've seen ranges go from 20 minutes to three hours, depending on the city. Now, when it came to the heights example, it wasn't about it depends. It wasn't you just, you just didn't know. Here, it's all about it depends. It depends on time of day, it depends on, on the weather, it depends on the traffic patterns, depends, right? And even with it depends, I mean, when, if I were to ask you to give me an estimate and, hold, and I will hold you accountable to it, which one would you give me? The highest. The highest. Now, here's where it gets tricky. Here's where it gets tricky. Because this is knowledge work, if people estimate and give the highest, what will they do? They'll yeah. keep working till they Bring get to that estimate. The reality is, this whole it depends thing, my flight is actually tomorrow at 6 a.m. So I need to leave the hotel by what, 4.30? So where are we actually here? We're probably down here. But you didn't know that piece of information. You actually didn't know that your lead developer is going to be brilliant during the first two weeks of the development. You didn't know that your tester will be sick. You didn't know that your analyst is going to break the lead. You did not know. And how can you estimate for that? Well, this is where it depends. And I'm not even talking about the things that we can sort of anticipate there's a 20% buffer. I'm talking about the stuff that requires creative intellectual ability where people just either get it or not, or depending on how they feel that day, they even can't even control their own intellectual processing of stuff. Right? That was the whole empirical defined process we were talking about. Now, back to estimates here. So when we estimate time, it's actually a dangerous estimate. Because it totally depends on stuff, listen carefully to me, outside your control. Yet, you're held accountable. So if you're held accountable to something outside of your control, you buffer. You buffer and you buffer pretty violently. 
I don't, no. I don't see the issue being the estimation. I see the issue being the way that estimation is used. Yeah. You have, in my world, you have to estimate. I have this debate with people constantly because I can't tell you. Well, if we use the height, the what was the earlier example we used where there was a the height? Um, GPS. Yeah, the well, high, high GPS, you know, okay, how high is somebody? Well, they might not be an inch, they might be as high as a, as a skyscraper. I mean, the, what I normally say to people is, is it a matchbox, a red box, Good. a house? We're getting there. And I'm not, we are going to go there. Oh, of course. I struggle. No, 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 no. But, but remember, I'm yeah. building a case here. Yeah, well, that's okay. Yeah, I'm totally building a case here. So, so going back to this, when we say it depends, okay, we want to sort of remove this it depends out of the factor. So instead of estimating time, what's a good measure that we could say, right, that would sort of less it depends, maybe distance, right? The distance from here to the airport is, pick a certain route, and I can tell you, right, it's, I don't know, 20 kilometers, whatever the distance. 20.123. Now, here comes the discussion. This estimate doesn't depend, and the execution time will still depend. But I've expressed the size of my project in terms of size, not time. When we talk about projects, we express their size in terms of time. How big is this project? Six months project, three months project. We express them in terms of time. We anchor the size of the project in a language of time. And this is what I want to shift. I want to anchor it in a language of size. Because size is less dependent on stuff. Now, we have to have a way to estimate time. But it's not going to be expressing the project in terms of time. It's going to be expressing it in terms of size and then calculating time. Here's the distance. Based on a velocity of x, it will take this much time. But when I contract, I contract on this. This preserves everyone's right. But if I contract on this, you would feel, if I went at 6 a.m. and it only took me 17 minutes, huh, I need the rest of my 30 minutes. So take me around. Show me around the city. And as we drive around the city, we get stuck. And now you try to take me back to the airport and it takes 42 minutes. I tell you, seven minute penalty. But I got there for total seven minute penalty. Because we add scope. And as we add scope, the complexity of the projects increase and we have more bugs and we have more issues and we miss deadlines. Go ahead, go ahead. Agreed. But you also need some form of target because the reverse can happen, which is if you don't have some form of estimation or, or target, it's just start off and let me know when you're finished. Well, we're not yeah. talking about that, right? We've agreed we're going to answer the question what, when, and how much. We're going to answer that question. That's all we're doing right now, right? So we're actually moving towards answering that question, which means I need an estimate. But the question is, what is this type of estimate? We want to estimate, and here's the summary, we want to estimate something in terms of size that is relative and won't take a lot of time. And those are what we call story points. Story points. So story points are an estimate of size. Size, right? So let me provide an example here. We're going to call this white marker points, so, or height points, right? If I give this one height point, this is going to get maybe three, right? You guys agree? If I give it 10, this is going to be? If I give it 200, this is going to be? What is it? OK. So it doesn't matter. The number doesn't matter at all. Two gummy bears, six gummy bears. Right? The, the number doesn't matter. What matters is the relativity of things to each other. You guys get me? 
So we're going to do an exercise. We're going to anchor this. Don't worry. I'll get there. Okay? We're going to do an exercise. It's for an estimation. And what I want you to understand is that this notion of story points is actually based on the complexity, right, and how much of something is there. So, for example, if I have a login screen, right, and, or let's, let's say a form, a form, okay? A form, very simple form, but it has 50 fields. So, that's simple, but a lot of it is there. Maybe equal to another form that has a very complex calculation method. When I put both together, this may be five story points and this may be five story points. So the key is when I look at them both beside each other, they feel more or less the same effort. You guys are giving me puzzled looks. What's happening? Yeah, it's fine. We're good? Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. Don't let it don't let it sit in there. Just tell it. There was a there was a system 30 years ago called function points. Yes. And so, so this is well, really very reminiscent. Well, here's, here's the issue. When we talk about size, size isn't new in, in no. the world, right? I mean, we've been trying to do function points, use case points. Yeah. We've been trying to estimate in size. However, they've been very complex because we're doing absolute estimation of size. And it's usually from an IT perspective, not from the user stories perspective. Yes. So here's a question. Can the business engage in estimation? With us? Through their user stories, they should be able to. Well, that's all we're estimating, user stories. Should the business be part of the estimation session? Yes, because then they understand that's right. how the estimation is arrived at. Perfect. Not just that, they participate. Yeah. Because they know if this is equal to this or not as well. Because we're not talking about implementation details, we're talking about complexity. And they understand complexity. And also, you don't want to go down to a very low level of detail format the users. You just want the uh, to You got it. You guys got it. So here's the thing. If you remember our picture here, we have estimate here and we have estimate here. We have two places where we're going to estimate. Here I want to estimate high level because all I'm trying to do is answer the question what, when, and how much. So I don't want low level estimates. I don't. So we're going to estimate using a technique called affinity estimation. What, affinity. Yeah. When we go down to here, we're going to estimate using a different technique called planning poker. Called cool. what? Planning poker. You guys are going to play around with planning poker today. Yeah. Hope you're going to enjoy it. No bets. <laughs> okay? So we're going to first try affinity estimation. Here's how we're going to do it. You will see in front of you in a second here. These are not in your notes, so don't even look for them. All right, you will see a bunch of items, right? Yes? See them? What I'd like you to do is the following. I'd like you as a team, take one sheet of white paper, and you're going to do the following. You're going to draw a line right down the middle, and on the left-hand side, you're going to sort these in from easiest to hardest. Now, here's the context. Let me give you some context. You guys know what a U-Haul truck is? All of you? It's a moving truck, right? But it's self-serve, okay? So you have all these items in your own moving truck. You're parked at the bottom of your new apartment, right? It's on the second floor. There's no elevator. Second floor, no elevator. And you need to move these things up into your apartment and make sure that they're done done. What do I mean by done done? I mean you can use them. So if assembly is needed or connections are needed, then you have to... Keep that into consideration. Cool? So you're going to sort them from easiest to hardest to move them up and get them done done. You have three minutes to do so. Go ahead. I'll tell you, this is the next part of this uh, exercise. 
Move and get done done. So what I'd want you to do next is this. At this point, you have items here. You're going to do this. You're going to divide this next section into five buckets. You're going to put extra small, small, medium, large, and X large. You're going to take the first item, you're going to put it in extra small. Then you're going to ask yourself, does, do you feel that the next item is in the same bucket with the first item, or is it a different order of magnitude? So go ahead and just connect them. All right, now what you're going to do next, I've put these arbitrary numbers. See them? Now this will change your understanding of what these boxes mean a little bit. Because basically here, the idea is anything here, when you compare it to anything here, it, this should be three and a little bit more times this, right? This should be five times this. So what you want to do is look at the things you have in boxes relative to the numbers now, right? And you can move things in boxes as you need to. And then calculate, calculate the total, okay? So if you have two items here, two times three equals six. If you have four items here, four times five equals 20, and then add all the numbers. Yep. So now we're gonna play a game of poker. It's called planning poker. First, to, to learn a different type of estimation, and then to highlight really when to use which at which level of detail, okay? So this technique is called planning poker. Um, here's how it works. So we have these items, right? The king size bed and all that kind of stuff. The idea here is we will all have an equal opportunity to estimate one of these items in our head and then pick a number, hide it till everyone has an estimate and then all show the number at the same time. When we show the number at the same time, it will generate a discussion between us. And that discussion is really going to help us understand more about the item and a line on its size. That's the goal. Okay? Now, how do we do that? The first thing is we need to pick a reference point. Okay? Because we're doing relative sizing, not absolute sizing, always think of this. As you're arguing the estimate of something, look at your other hand. Are you comparing it to something else, or are you just talking about it in isolation? So we need to always be comparing things to each other. So before I start estimating, I need something as a reference point so that the next item I estimate I can compare it to. Mm -hmm. Now, when we pick a reference point, we're not going to keep referencing everything to that reference point. It's just our first starting point. And it shouldn't be the smallest or the largest, somewhere in the middle. If you pick the smallest item, then you've not picked a reference point, you've defined a unit. Okay? And we don't want that. So, out of our list here, what do you guys think is sort of not too big, not too small, somewhere in the middle? Desk. Desk, okay. So, for reference purposes, this is my desk. Right? One of these, right? This is it. So, no drawers, nothing. This is my desk, and like modern furniture, so this is it. Okay? Um, it's all assembled. Um, that's it. That's really it. So we're going to give this reference point a number. So what do you guys think? These are your numbers. So let's take a look here. Something not too big, not too small. Uh, what do you think? A five? Five, yeah, five. All right, let's give it a five. All right? So this desk is a five. Everyone get that? Mm -hmm. All right. Now, keeping in mind that the desk is a five, let's talk about the bed. Now, here's the process I'd like you to start with. This is going to be a very prescriptive process till we get used to how this works, and then we can break the mold. Okay? So the prescriptive process says this. On the table here, we need two roles identified. My value team facilitator and my delivery team facilitator. Right? My scrum master my product owner. So who will be the value team facilitator? So they are the product owner. They know this stuff inside out. Who's good with furniture? Come on, someone. I'll do it. Okay. Brett, you're our value team facilitator. You're our product owner. Who will be our scrum master or our delivery team facilitator? And they need to have a stopwatch or a timer with them. 
on their phone or something. Stopwatch. Come on, lazy folks. Yeah, okay, stopwatch. Yeah. Perfect. Okay, so we have our product owner, our scrum master, our facilitator, and facilitator here. Excellent. So I'm going to simulate your role for a minute, just for this first round, and then you'll, you'll pick up. I'd like you to bound me to one minute. Okay? So I'm going to first describe what the king size bed looks like in a minute, and you guys can ask me questions. You ready? Yep. Okay. So it's a king size bed, and um, it's all disassembled in the truck. Um, it has two single uh, box springs, and then the king size mattress. Uh, what else? What else do you guys want? To know? Is it does metal it or wood? Uh, wood. It's wood. Does, does it have a headboard? headboard? Yes, it does have a headboard and a foot and a footboard as well. And does it include tools? the bedding? I have all the tools. Yes. Are we talking about the bedding as well? Yeah, I'd like it complete. I'd like you to put the bedding on top and the pillows, and I've got a lot of pillows. I like Does the headboard pillows. also come, some beds come fitted with the side, side drawers? No, 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 no. What else do you guys want to know about? Any drawers in the box space? Box nope. space? nope. It's pretty heavy wood, though. It's oak. It's oak wood. It's pretty heavy. Ten seconds. Any is other the, questions? Is the mattress zipped, or is it one single unit? What do you mean? You can get mat king size mattresses. Oh, it's no, it's one. It's one. Okay, time up now. Okay, great. Um, so, granted that information, we'll get your numbers. Pick a number, knowing that the desk is a five, and put your number on the desk. Now, what I'd like you to do as a facilitator is make sure everyone has a number before anyone shows their number. So, including uh, myself, including yourself, everyone yeah. estimates. Dungeon. Yep, you're ready? Okay, cool. So just say one, two, three, show your estimates. One, two, three. Yeah. All right, so that's the beauty of it. We got a whole range. We got a 20 and a 40 and a 100, right? And what we want to do is engage in a discussion for a minute. Now, we trigger the discussion between the highest and the lowest, right? But everyone can come into the discussion. After a minute, we're going to re-estimate. And we're going to keep that cadence till we come to consensus. Okay? Okay. You ready? Okay. All Everyone right. Starting. So I'm going to demo me and you. So you think it's only four times the amount of effort for a desk? That's it? Yeah, because they're big pieces and they go together easily. It's more about the effort of getting it into the house. Yeah, but getting it into the house is a lot more effort than, than the desk. The desk is like one trip. Look at how many trips are going to go up and down for the bed. Right, I mean, that's sure, a lot. Well, I probably didn't allow for putting, making the bed, actually. And the assembly. Yeah. Now, it's not just me and him. You guys can jump yeah, in. Yeah, as well. yeah, the assembly plus the bed plus fitting them and putting the pillows. But I, 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 I don't think it's 10 times. I, I think it's a lot more than 10. I think it's 20 times the effort. One of the concerns I've got is I don't know how many people are involved in the move. Does it make a difference? It's, well, it's, 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 it's effort. It's, it's relative. Yeah. It's relative to the desk. Okay. See, that's the power of this. It's ten, not... Ten yeah. seconds. You no. can pause. The power of this type of estimation is not absolute. It doesn't matter how many people... Assume more than two, right? Just so that you can get the physics out of the way. Right. Assume more than two. Okay. But it really doesn't matter because all we're doing is not... We're not estimating the time necessary to do it. We're estimating the effort compared to the desk. Now, we had a brief discussion. What the facilitator will do is say, guys, I know we're not done, but let's take another estimate. Let's just see where we are, right? So you want these constant learning and discovery points to see where we are on our estimate and our understanding. So, just getting into the. Okay, are we all down? Yep. Show them? Yep, show. Ooh. All right, give us a minute to discuss. Yeah. Well, now, I would always pick on the guy that went from a 20 to a 100 and ask him, what made you change? Well, I reassessed the amount of effort because I hadn't taken into account the making of the bed. And that, yeah, that, that's quite a long 
So maybe you guys want to discuss the uh, yeah, 40 I, and the 100. I, I think there's a lot of effort, but not up to like 20 times more than the desk. There is a significant effort though, but not to that extent though. Yeah, and, that, I, and I move from 100 down to 40. Because um, I think it's probably about eight times, you know, eight times the effort in terms of the trips up the stairs and you know the time taken to put drawers in and make bed and um, I mean, throwing pillows, throwing pillows. But don't you think that the, the assembly? I mean, this has no assembly whatsoever, yeah. right? This is we're taking it up and we're putting it, yeah, and it has a five, right? It's a king size base. This desk wouldn't even be what a third of a desk. Yeah, the and, so and the assembly, yeah, you've and the assembly of aligning the headboard and the footboard and, and the screwing. And you know what? Maybe it's not a hundred, but it's more than forty. Yeah. Time. But maybe we have Okay. Um, now, here's an important technique, important thing to understand. If it's more than forty, do you go to a hundred, or do you stick to forty? Yeah. You go two cards. Right, and this is this is part of the, the 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 design of it. That, and again, I'm not a huge fan of this number sequence, but it is what it is, and it's mm -hmm. very popular and it's used, so I'm okay with it. Right, but the key is to understand that even if there was a card 60, for example, the question you want to ask yourself: if you feel it's a 70, don't go down to a 60. Right, because there's still more unknowns anyway. Mm -hmm. All right, so. Now let's assume, because I'm teaching here, yeah, right? So let's assume we still get stuck on 40 and 100, okay? I would say after two to three rounds, put the item on pause and start estimating other items. Right. Because we only have one reference point at this point, which is the desk. Yeah. But if we get more reference points, then we can actually compare it more to other things. Mm -hmm. Cool? Yeah. So in light of that, Let's assume that the king size bed is a hundred, okay, and that the desk is a five. Now we have two reference points as we get started with this estimation session. Now I want you guys to start estimating the couches. And I'm going to be a participant and stop for teaching moments, but you're the product owner, you're the scrum master. Rock and roll. Okay, cats. Everyone? So we go. <coughs> Doing our minute? I've got to describe it, right? No. Yes. Oh, yeah, go for it. Yes. Do we describe Sorry. it first, do we? Yes. Yeah, okay. I mean, I don't even know what to estimate. Yeah. Right, okay, so right. I'll start. You can put your whip down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, just, I was just welcome to my wheel. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Okay, um, description. Yeah, so two couches, uh, both are leather, one's a three seater with cushions on so, the. Um, sofa bed? No. <laughs> no, three three cushions on the base and on the um, back, so that's one of the chairs. The other is a, a single sized couch, a, a single seater, um, quite large in dimensions though. They're, they're, you know, for Will it fit through a door normally? Uh, you might need a, you know, if you angle it, you probably can. Sure, yeah. but, it, but it, it does fit. Yep. Um, there's no reclining unit, no, no sofa no, bed. No, no, it's got no roller wheels or anything mm -hmm. like that. Um, so it's the single one one piece has no detachable cushion. Oh, it's got detachable cushion. It's just they're part of the same set. Ten seconds. Uh, it's brown. <laughs> <laughs> How hard is it? Will it be? To, is it something you can get your arms around easily, or is it, it something that's difficult to carry? Well, they're Time. two different sizes. So. Mm. Okay. Cards, everyone. I, I need a minute. Just, just, just one card. Right. Were you adding them? Yes, of course. No, no, no. no. <laughs> I like that, but no. We don't add the cards. We and I'm not cheating them. either. No. No, no, no. Okay. Flip. Okay. Okay. Well, how are we going there? We've got 20 and a 40. Who'd like to uh, start speaking perhaps on behalf of the 40s since they're the minority? The product owner himself thinks it's 20. <laughs> well, I'm just participating. Yeah. I'm anticipating the fact that they're two different sizes. And I'm, uh, so I'm, I'm seeing the smaller one perhaps being more around a 15, and the bigger one being more awkward, 
uh, therefore requiring more effort, uh, totalling to 40. Can I ask if the if desk is five? Yes. And I'm, the smaller one, yes, it's it's still a big catch, but it's I, I'm, I'm picturing it being about the same size as the desk. But, but I think it's more effort. I mean, I think it's easier to move a desk up than a couch. If you remember, and with, a cushion. A, with a desk, you can turn it on its side and angle around very easily. But with a couch, we well, exactly. may have to try and turn it onto its a different so, angle. So, so, yeah, different so the small the one for me is more than five in the first place. I, I, I agree it's more than five. I don't think it's 15. I don't think it's three no, times as much. Uh, let's say 10. Okay. And then the, the other one is sort of double or triple that one. So that's how I came to the 40 in my mind. 10 seconds. Yeah, there's cushions. There's two trips at least for the one exactly. couch and probably four for the there's second. There's also the weight. Yeah. yeah. So that's why, I, that's why I said it for a time. All right, should we just stack the cards and have another go? I'm just playing. Okay, flip. New card game. Consensus. Great, yes. Great consensus. Oh, awesome. Lovely. So, two couches are 40. Um, king size bed is 100. Dusk is 5. Right? Microwave? Microwave. Yes, yeah, so that's an old style microwave. 1980s. It's a 1980s microwave. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> that first came out. Uh, Turn table, uh, quite large, you know, because, um, yeah, plugged in and the time set. What sort of space is it going into? Oh, it's going above the uh, oven. Is it, so above the oven, it's not a counter type? No, no, but there is a, you know, there is a counter above the oven. So it's an the wall oven. So is there room to get in to plug it in, or is it going to have to be sort of manoeuvred, plugged in, manoeuvred in? Yeah, a bit of that, uh, bit of that. Right. Yeah. Hmm. Is it, uh, being old school, is it quite heavy? Yes. How big? More, more than one person type heavy. Do I answer that? Answer whatever the hell you want. I wouldn't think so. Yeah, Ten seconds. Be all right. Yeah. You got to set the time. <laughs> <laughs> Is there time. a manual for setting time? time? <laughs> oh, I don't know. It's in the box of box. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> I guess that's an unknown, isn't it? Somewhat. Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, flip. A three. Two. Well, it's... Can I? Yeah, yeah. Um, please. You're wrong, <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> go ahead. Uh, it's, it's one trip, one person. Um, there might be some fiddling to get it in, but it's one person carrying the thing up. So oh, I mean, teaching moment. You didn't compare it with anything yet. See? Com com sorry, compared to... Good. Keep... Compared to I'm just trying to so yeah. practice, right? Yeah. So keep yeah. making sure you're doing yes. relative yes. estimation. Good. Keep com going. Com compared, compared to a desk, which is going to be two people, there's one person involved. It's old style, so setting the time is an analog. It's not digital. It's just turning a dial. Ah. Plugging it in and flicking the switch. Well, well done. You're done. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> but, counter to that, yes, I... You're assuming it's two people. If it's old style, it's probably quite heavy and, and bulky. I did and, ask. And yes, and you did say it was old style. Now, if it's up in an alcove above something, one person's not going to be able Ten. to easily lift, lift it up, plug it in, and slide it in. So the effort required is going to be greater than a desk. Yeah, that's the, the assembly part Time. Is, is why it, it moved from yeah. here. Okay, re-estimation, guys. Okay, it's flipped. Siva, you went up to a 13. Uh, I was still at, I was at 13 just now. You were at 13? Yeah. Oh, I'm okay. still remaining at 13 because I think we have to be careful with electronic stuff. A desk, if you just accidentally drop it, that's fine. But this is, if you drop it, it's going to probably gone. So you have to take extra cautious. And uh, kind of be hazardous if you're going to be carrying it above. That sort of you know, extra things that we have to think about. Wiring. But I don't think it goes up to a 13. I mean, you're talking almost now, um, almost half the two couches, right? I mean, that's a, that's a lot. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I'm kind of thinking, okay, so it's a bit easier to get into place. 
But um, once you get there, you, you, there's a lot of fiddling around. Two people needed to uh, manoeuvre the thing into the slot above the fridge um, um, while you're plugging the power in and turning it on because the cable's short. Um, so Is the cable short? I don't know, it's a standard one metre. Um, <laughs> counter to that though, it's a modern kitchen. It's got a, a set hole for you to pop the plug in, drops down and plugs in straight away. Well actually I was going to say, that makes it even even more difficult because it's a bigger, it's an old style big microwave going into a modern well, kitchen. So no, well, is it a modern we kitchen? We check the time check space. Is, is it a yeah, modern no, kitchen? No, you took all the time talking, so <laughs> stuff your time. Yes, it's a modern kitchen. Okay. And do you see, that's a great learning point. Do you see when the facilitator is not content neutral. How it can, uh, yeah. right? Like, you took all the time and you're controlling the time. I wasn't sure whether I was supposed no, to no, be no, contributing no. or not. No, 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 no. Right now you're contributing, but I'm just showing you. It's a good yeah. teaching yeah. moment, right? Yeah, right, right? That that see that reaction that happened mm. because if you're the facilitator, you own the time, you own the process, and you're talking, mm. right? That becomes a very dangerous um, combination. So either you let. You can, you can let an activity like this self-facilitate. How? Just put a timer that's continuous, right? Mm. And therefore, you can contribute. But if you're controlling process, you've got to be very aware of stepping in and out of it. Yeah. Just as a, it was a good teaching moment that came out. Let's assume we can't come to an agreement on this one. Let's move on to the next one. Okay. So is that the idea always, to come to agreement? Yes. Or so with planning poker, what you want to do is come to consensus. Yep. Now, by consensus, what we mean is this. And actually, you know what? Let, let's, let's, let's practice consensus building in, in the microwave before we move on. So consensus building says, I can live with it and support it. Right? And so someone may come up, and, and I may have, right, I put the eight down. Where's my eight? So I put an eight down, and I may say, guys, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask here. Do you guys think we can live and support an eight, all of us? So what I'm trying to do is get us to consensus, mm. right? Siva might say, no way. I don't think it's an eight. I, I respect. Okay. Then I would say to him, what would it take for you to agree, right, to, to a number? And he said, well, I would have to know. Now, lis listen to the conversation. It's about knowing. It's not about being hard-headed about your number, right? I would need to know the exact weight of the thing, mm. all right? I need to know the exact dimensions. So that becomes the question. Now, I want you to notice here, we've spent 15 minutes on three items. In the past, you got six minutes, all the items. But we're understanding a lot more about the item in this mm. estimation process. I have an issue with this process because I think it's very competitive and very competitive it could be but the the purpose of it is and to and it, trust on that basis and respect um i would say as a team grows into this i've rarely seen that maybe it's because we're just warming up to it right now okay. but as a team now remember one of the things we have as we we do this on team level is we have multiple reference points so we're walking in almost with a menu right Here's what a five feels like. Here's what a two feels like. And here's what an eight feels like. So it really is about comparative. Is this more like this or less like this? Well, we don't know. Okay, what is it? Okay. Um, versus doing the absolute. What you want to get away from is this absolute type of estimation and more of that relative type of estimation. Okay. At the same time, you do as a team gain a sense of what the twos and the fives are. Here's a beware. Caution, caution, caution. As you go out there and talk to teams, some teams unfortunately have boiled story points down to time. So they'd say, one story point is like one hour of work. What did uh, you just do? Just you totally flipped what story points are supposed to be about. They're supposed to be about relative size. You, that's when it becomes an empty ritual. Right? They just made it into a function point. A function, not even if I wish, <laughs> not even a function point. They made it into another measure of time. That's all it is, a masked measure of time. All right. So what we want to make sure we do is maintain this relativity, 
right? It's the relative nature. And so if you want reference points, bring more reference points to the game. The other thing that I think is really important is the style of facilitation to keep the emotions out of play. Yes, to keep the emotions out of play is important. And there will be emotions, and that's okay, right? You bring it back. Remember, the humanity of things comes as a package, mm. which means you will not be able to decouple issues of trust up and down. Right, it, there's, it, it's an ebb and a flow, right? Even with the closest of friends and partners, it, 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 right? The, we don't want to create a fictitious right. team dynamic. Right. A real environment of human interaction has the ups and the downs and the emotions, and I just got pissed at you, and then I'm going to forgive you, right? And then, really, I don't know much about you, so I'm going to be cautious, right? That's just natural. You do whatever you can to build trust, granted, knowing that the human dynamics will play its course. And as a facilitator, you want to be conscious of the human dynamics and provide an environment for the trust to grow, obviously, not to deplete it, right? But the reality is some of this is just quite real. Mm. And as we go into these estimation sessions, I'll get pissed. I really thought it was a 40. Okay, I but... Think, is there a cultural issue here, though? In that some societies are much more able to cope with that type of combative emotional play than others. Uh, no, Because no. New, Zealand, New Zealanders definitely don't function in the way the Americans do. No, and this is... I've done this in, in multiple cultures. Okay. This is not a, a, an American culture thing by any means. The, the purpose... And by the way, if, if it's interesting that you're, you're articulating it as a combative... Because exercise? that's how I'm feeling. Yeah, exactly. Based on the results of this process. Yeah, yeah. And you could see my reaction. Yep, I and saw I, that. And I'm struggling to keep that out of check. So my answer would be, I'd avoid this. I'd walk away because it's bringing the worst out of me. And, and that's, that's where the coaching piece comes in. The right. Agile coach would sit one-on-one -on -one with yep. you and say, what was bothering you about that? And you may say, it was really how Ahmed was talking to me. He's like, what about that bothered you? He just totally ignored my number. And by the way, in a real exercise, we won't give a minute. We give two minutes. We give space for people to talk. Right? I'm just doing this for the sake of the exercise. But you want to give space for people to talk. right? My concern is you'll lose engagement with key players, depending on the nature of how they're made. Could be. Could be. But here's the thing. Everyone has to play. Right. Okay. And, and, and That's part what of, I was wondering about. And part of the process is, even if you're disengaged, what are you going to put up? You're still going to have to think about a number and put it out. And you know that the number you're going to put up, you're going to have to defend. Mm -hmm. I mean, a, a funny story. <laughs> I was doing this with a remote team. And honestly, I got distracted. All right? So I was multitasking. And then they said, okay, everyone put the rest in it. I'm like, crap. <laughs> like, I couldn't eat. I didn't even hear what the guy said. So I was scared to death. Because if I put a high number up, yeah. they're going to ask me, why did you put that? I put a low number up. I was like, why did you put that? I had, I was scared. And I, I picked an eight. Right? And thank God it was in the middle. So it really <laughs> didn't happen. But, but I, I, I focused from that point on. Because it, it works the other way, though. Um, and, and it, it is quite good because, um, as I reflect on it, because... Um, you know, in a team environment with different experience, you might have quite senior users sitting around the table with relatively junior developers, perhaps. Yeah. And um, effectively, you know, because it's everyone's focused on the number, um, it values everyone equally. So those people who are at the high and the low, you know, are invited to talk, and and they get and to everyone help. else as well. Right. Yeah. And and by the way, this is how this exercise came about. A guy named James Grenning was the one who came up with this, and in talking to him. The, 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 the reason he came up with it, because as they were estimating, the seniors were dominating and anchoring. Mm -hmm. So if they said, oh, that's, that's hard, then everyone already thought it's hard, right? But the, the purpose of this is to say to everyone, wait, don't, don't judge. Everyone think by yourself. And sometimes it's, it's fascinating. We could all put 40 down. And one person could put a, I don't know, a, a 20. And as they explain their point, 
everyone goes down to a 20. We've used a similar approach with evaluating proposals from suppliers, and we gave people the, to ask people to, to rank them, to rate them, and then we did the same thing. We looked at the outliers, and some of them it was quite interesting because you'd have this group, they did it before the meeting, and then we just put up and we'd talk about, well, we've got somebody that's out here, and everybody else is over here. Now, do you want to talk about why? And quite often people would go, oh, hadn't picked that out of the proposal. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah now I want to move over here as well. So another variant of that. It was so so I'm, I'm really glad that as a learning experience, you saw how some people can react to this. And this is something we need to be aware of as we engage with these exercises because it may not be comfortable for everyone. Right? And as you facilitate, you facilitate, whoever facilitates this, just be aware of team dynamics. But learning from the exercise, what you want to do is pick what level of detail you want to engage in in the estimate. So if you're estimating the entire backlog, you probably don't want a deep level. You could do affinity estimation. If we get into release planning and before we actually engage in the, the, the story, you want a lower level of estimate so you would engage in something like estimation. Uh, planning poker, sorry. I suspect I know the answer to this, and probably not the, the question. So, the first, you go around this a couple of times, so your your sizing estimations sort of start to take on how long it took or the effort that was required because you, you're gaining knowledge in the subject matter area. Oh, so not as we go through this, but over the years? Over the years, or if you're in a, in a large project where you're using the same tools, the same, yes. but similar but different things. Yes. So, you start the team starts to get a better understanding, is it appropriate to then start using that estimation or should you avoid that? Do not do time-based estimate using this. If you want, use, use, use time-based estimate. Do not boil this down to a time-based estimate. And the reason why is this, it's a slippery slope. Once you start on the time base, here's what's gonna happen. So I'm gonna say, that's 20 hours, right? I'm gonna say it's 20 hours. Now. The tester is going to say, well, I need five more hours to test. And the business guy now is sitting and is like, I don't have a clue how many hours this thing is going to take. So I wasn't meaning so much using this exercise itself, but at some point after this is done, we end up with a, with a unit of measure, which is our desk. So once we've built our desk, that, that provides us with a different sort of benchmark. But, but see, that's exactly what I was saying, beware of. The desk is the first reference point in the exercise, but not a corporate reference point. Mm. I must admit, as we were going through this and we started to allocate relative to others, I was thinking I would reevaluate the desk. I was waiting for that. The desk is probably a three, or maybe a two, I don't know. What happens is a triangulation of estimates. Mm. Right? Mm. So as you start saying, okay, everything relative to everything, that's the beware sign. Do not pick a unit. Oh. Once you pick a unit, it's no longer relative estimation. It's absolute with a unit. <laughs>